Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Right. So today we're going to be doing a kind of belated mid-year book freakout tag. And I've done a couple of these now and I never remember who started this tag, who the creator was. So I will get on that. If I find out, I'll put it in the description below. If not, I, I, I guess I will just not. So we are halfway through the year. Well, I mean, we're over halfway through the year, but I've read very little, if anything, in this month of July. So we are just talking about the first six months of the year for this. And I am still very ahead on my reading challenge. I have read 74 out of 100 books, I believe. And my original reading goal was 52, because I try and read one book for every week of the year. And that's how it's been for the past few years. Just I was on some kind of crack at the start of this year. <clears throat> so although I am a little ahead on my reading challenge, my TBR pile continues to grow in size. I've also rediscovered the joy of our um, hour. The joy of my local library opened again after our third lockdown. I believe the UK's in and we're going into our third wave, so maybe there'll be a fourth coming soon. But I've been looking forward to going into the library again and actually having physical books to hold. So I've been reading a lot of, of their e-books during the pandemic and I do just miss the experience of browsing shelves, of having a book and not having to pay for it. So as I said today we're going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag which is probably a good time to do this because I was looking at my reading challenge earlier and I did not have a clue what any of these things are. So let's begin. So question one is best book you've read so far in 2021. I have a Goodreads shelf dedicated to the best books that I've read each year. I usually pick the top like 10%-ish of what I've read or maybe like 5-10% to and I try and narrow that down again by also the highest rated ones so it's my favourites and it's also the Goodreads community's favourites as well. So I try and update it throughout the year with any books that I've rated 5 star or any like 4, 4.5 four star books that I'm just obsessed with and I'll narrow it down at the end of the year. So I can actually answer the question pretty accurately um, even if I haven't f f finished reviewing all these books and can't remember why I like them. <laughs> so I currently have 6 or 7 books on the list for 2021 I believe and um, <laughs> These two are currently battling for the top spot. So we have Law by Alexander Bracken. I've done a review for this. It's up on the blog and it's also up on this channel. I got this version of it in an Owl Crate box, which I think is, it was my first Owl Crate box. And I fell in love with it from the first page. This is a Greek mythology kind of cross Hunger Games style book. And this one, it, it it still has my buy and get one half price waterstone sticker on. This is also the first like new book I've read in a while. I originally read this from the library and now I have a physical copy and I didn't realise how tiny it is. I love that. So this is the other top book of the year so far is House of Holly by Crystal Sutherland and I did fall in love with the cover before anything else. I've only read one more of her books which is up here, it's Our Chemical Hearts. And I had like a kind of average experience with it. I've watched the film of it recently and it made me wonder like, do I just not like the film adaptation or did I not like the source material? So that is, I had a questionable experience with that book so I, I didn't really have high hopes with this one but then I became obsessed with it. This also has a review both on the blog and on this channel. Question two is best sequel that you've read so far in 2021? I've I've read very few exciting sequels this year, or very few sequels at all. Like the biggest one I can think of would be Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stavotto, which is somewhere on this shelf here. It's this one. But I did not enjoy that. So I think the best sequel that I've read is um, not out yet. Um, <laughs> The one that really stands out to me and is still the only book that matters to me right now and has put me in a massive reading slump is um, Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World, which is a sequel to Ari and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. The review is again both on the blog and this channel. It's a very spoiler free review because the book doesn't come out until October, November time. So I don't want to give away too much right now, I just want to tell you what I think about it. And honestly, a sequel has no right being that beautiful. 
Question three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. And as usual, I am very behind on, on what books have come out this year. I wrote this blog post, because the blog post has been out for a few weeks now, before this came out. And I know um, Rainbow, Ra Rainbow Rowell has been um, rightfully held accountable for racism, spe specifically in Eleanor and Park, it's up there. But I have a very complicated relationship with her because I don't like or agree with her values as a person, but I am obsessed with her writing style. So this has come out since um, I wrote the blog version of this video. So I'm like, it is 570 pages long. This is huge. Like, Carry On was big, but not this big. The sequel was a little, and now this is huge. So like, I am looking forward to reading this, but this um, did not exist at the time of this post. At the time of this post, again, it wasn't a new release because I believe um, this book is almost a year old now, but I've heard so many good things since the release date and I've just been waiting for like either my library to get an ebook copy or a physical copy of me to buy it. So I got this very beautiful copy is again it's got the bow and half press sticker on <laughs> this very beautiful copy of Ray Bearer which I've been waiting to read for a long time and I'm gonna put it up here this is my new TBR pile I guess question four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year again not a clue what's coming out this year I can tell you some anticipated releases I have in general would be uh oh my god Lake Law by Anna Marie McClemma. Um, the Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd Jones. I do have a little shelf on Goodreads of that's called my high priority TBR, which are books that I think are coming out either 2022 or 2023. So like they're a way away. But what have I pre-ordered recently? I think Rick Riordan has a book that's not a Percy Jackson universe book. I think it's called Daughter of the Deep and that is coming out sometime this year I believe but I'm very excited for that. I'm very excited for anything by him and I'm very excited for any Oceany inspired books. Question 5 is biggest disappointment of the year and I'm still learning to accept that I can just like did not finish DNF um, books instead of suffering through ones that I dislike. But there are some that I stuck through because although they were bad, they were still entertaining, which is a concept I am still grasping. So the book or books that stand out to me for being bad and disappointing but still entertaining would be the selection and the other two books in that the original trilogy series. I know there's another two, but the original three are the ones I have read. And I mean reading the reviews, I should have known it's disappointing, but it has such a, the, like, the entire three books have such high ratings on Goodreads that I thought, yeah, maybe it'll be okay, maybe it's just the bad reviews that are rated highly, but mm. there was like a good week or two where The One, which is the third book in the series, was the only book on Goodreads that I've ever given a one star rating to. <laughs> Question six is biggest surprise, and it's this one up here. Um, Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand and I've read what other book I've read other of her books before or or I've wanted to I can't think what they're called right now but this book was recommended to me by a friend who has a pretty solid idea of books that I like but I wasn't expecting this like very like sad contemporary fantasy influenced middle grade book to become a, like, a quiet favourite of the year and to own my entire heart. Okay, next question is favourite new author, so either new as a new debut author or an author that's just new to me. And I kind of had two answers for this. I'm going to start off with saying um, Emily Lloyd-Jones, because this book I'm obsessed with this, it came out in 2019 I believe, but it's kind of having a resurgence now. And I've only read one of her books, but she has like her next book, The Drowned Woods, is that like one of my highest anticipated books for next year. So she's a favourite new author just because I'm obsessed with this and I'm going to come back to this book in another question I think. But my answer to this question for now 
is um, Hannah Muscovitz. Um, she's someone who I've had on my radar for a year or two purely because I've seen Paper Fury review these two books specifically. And these are the two that I've read, which is why she's my favourite new author just because I've read a couple of her books. And I fell completely in love with her words and her imagination and I'm so excited what, to see what she does next. And also just like like catch up on like her back catalogue back catalogue of books. Like I'm obsessed with these and these are meant to be like the bad air quotes bad ones. Next question is newest favourite character and again Um the character Teeth, who is the main character of the book Teeth. Um he's half human and half fish and I am fully in love with the idea of him. And I have a full review, again, a full review on the blog and the channel of this book where I will gush about this fish boy for a lot longer. If you want detail about this, I'm trying to keep this video more concise because I think I have reviewed a majority of these books. So if you're interested in specific books I mentioned, it, it will be somewhere. <laughs> Next question is a book that made you cry. And there are very few books in my lifetime that have made me cry and there's only one book this year that I've had to put down the book just to compose myself for a moment because I was getting close and that is the Ariane Dante sequel, um, Dive Into the Waters of the World. I picked it up to read because I have read the first one before thinking that it'll be pretty light-hearted especially as the cover is more like a sunrise it seems a lot more light-hearted and the description seems a lot lighter and based off the fur book I thought oh it won't be it won't be too depressing like it probably will take over my life but it won't be too bad and I thought it could have like middle book blues or sequel blues where it just wouldn't be as good as the first one and oh I was wrong <laughs> I started reading and I knew from the description because it was very descriptive roughly how it was going to end but it still just completely destroyed me emotionally Next question is book that made you happy and this is where I'm coming back to this one. The Bone House is by Emily Lloyd-Jones. It isn't a particularly happy book but it is filled with warmth and light moments and family and an undead goat. It's also rooted in Welsh must why can't I talk today? It's very rooted in Welsh mythology which is something that has a space very close to my heart and the comfort and the familiarity of this is what brings me joy. So question 12, I've given up counting questions pretty much and I don't have fingers for this one, is a um, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received and that would be my beloved, Shiny. And I think this is probably one of the prettiest books I own. I've ever seen, only ever seen one version of this cover which I think is more circle, it's more sun rays, it's got a face in the middle, it's like yellow and purple kind of. So when I saw this in Waterstones, I kind of had to do a double take, so I was like, what book is this? What is this? Oh my god, the, the sun's coming out, the sun rays are coming out. <laughs> but I had to do a double take, so I, I, I didn't realise there was more covers. And I love to have like the subtle faces. You can't quite see because of the light, but it's beautiful and I can't wait to read this. And final question is, what books do you need to read by the end of this year? And I'm in like a... I can't tell if it's still there. I'm in like a very constant struggle of trying to read books that I've already owned and have just forgotten about. And I'm gonna tell you, oh, is that a little better? I hope that's a little better. Yeah, I'm in this constant struggle of trying to like catch up on reading books I already have and trying to read like classics. Like last year I read the Harry Potter series for the first time because people kept like bullying me like, oh, you haven't read this? And it's like, no. So I'm trying to read like, you know, the classics. Because people try and make me feel guilty for not having read them. And also I'm trying to trying to reread just whatever I like. So there's this struggle of read new things and reread things that I know I love. Or also series that I read so long ago that I wasn't on Goodreads at the time. So I need to have them like updated on there. But I think my high priority TBR would be Ray Bearer, Anywhere the Wind Blows and this one down here um the dan harrell kind of like mental health self-help book because i was and still am the biggest dan and phil stan so this 
means a lot to me and I kind of live in fear of reading it that it won't live up to expectations or it will just read me is that no I just want to read it so I live in fear of this book so that's all the questions for this tag I'll leave a full list of questions in the description below I will also drop a link to my reviews playlist in case you want to read reviews for some of these specific books or maybe my 2021 videos playlist because that'll be that is just pretty much these reviews and there'll be a link to the blog in case you want written versions and I'll leave the full list of questions and I'll leave you with this so please in the comments below tell me like what is the best book that you have read so far this year what was your biggest surprise and have there been any disappointments because I love hearing about disappointments thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time bye